Let's get in to Greg Popovich. And let's start off with just stating the the in the, the, the elephant in the room. Not even the elephant. It's just it's the fact that will give us a starting point discussing Greg Popovich. That Greg Popovich is the all-time winningest coach in NBA history with 1,364 wins. That's a lot of wins. Number one all-time in wins in, in the NBA. This is from a guy who does, still will tell people that he does not belong as a head coach in the NBA. He's, he says, oh, you know, I'm a head coach. But I'm not a Hall of Fame guy. I'm a D3 coach from his humble beginnings as a D3 coach. But let's kick things off. Get us in the mood for how to be surly enough to be Greg Popovich by playing a little montage of some of the best Greg Popovich in-game interviews for when they introduced something that most coaches felt was ridiculous and repetitive and not necessary. And what they did was they complained. What Greg Popovich did was give bad interviews. How happy were you with the shot selection even though they came back? Happy? Reasonably. Happy? We got to keep our heads up and keep playing. Thanks, Pop. No second question. I'm, None. I'm hurt. <laughs> Thanks very much, Pop. Your impressions of the first quarter? We're behind and they're ahead. Why is that? They scored more than we did, and we were pretty crappy on defense. It's been fun. No praise. I don't want praise. Okay. Then. I want a question so I can get back to my team. Okay. A minute into this game, you took Tony Parker out and put in Patty Mills. Why? Because I wanted to. That's Greg Popovich coming out of the locker room. Coach, what do you got to get back to? And then he shamed me, Mark. <laughs> he said, "He said, at least we're down three. We're playing the NBA champions. We're not turning the ball over. We're not sending them to the free throw line. I am thrilled with where we are at. You know, how do you slow that down in the second quarter? Well, we, uh, you know, hopefully they won't make five more threes in the second quarter, but that, that's tough. How do you get you guys to make some more shots? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll, I'll ask them to make the shots. Thanks. There's Pop at his surliest in-game interviews. And if you just take him at that and you don't see the whole time and the whole picture of Greg Popovich, you may not get the image of the man. But Greg Popovich was a guy who went to the Air Force, played for the Air Force team, realized that his basketball career was not going to go much further than playing in college, ends up being a D3 coach. Pomona Pitzer. Pomona Pitzer is where he coached. Didn't really have a budget. Couldn't pay him much. There was a point where they said, like, hey, man, we can't really pay you that much. Like, you could go do better. And he said, I'm happy here. I'm happy because I really feel like I'm making a difference in these, in these guys' lives. And that's what he wanted to do. He was happy being in a place where he, you know, he could have his family. He could have a nice – he could be in this community. He could feel that he was making a difference, however small. He felt that he could make a difference. Then he meets Larry Brown. Larry Brown kind of takes him under his wing, and Larry he takes a, a leave of a year to go work with Larry Brown in Kansas. Larry Brown basically starts to take him under his wing, and when Larry Brown goes to the Spurs, he brings Pop along with him, and everybody uh, in the NBA and in the Spurs basically doesn't know why this guy is here. But he proves himself. Proves himself, goes in. Starts coaching well. He starts doing things with the team, you know, starts helping out. And this is around he, – he, because he coached from 79 to 88 at Pomona and Pitzer. This is early 90s, late 80s, early 90s with the Spurs. He gets fired from the Spurs. Larry Brown's gone. He's gone. He ends up in Golden State working with Avery Johnson. So that's where that connection really builds. If they worked together when they were at the Spurs and they worked together – and then a little bit of unknown or not really talked about. It's known, but it's not really talked about Spurs history. People say it went Red McCombs, Peter Holt as, as owners of the Spurs. But there was a period in time when Red McCombs was going to sell the Spurs and Peter Holt wasn't necessarily ready to buy the team yet. He was an investor. He was one of the people that was buying into the team. But it took a group of investors to basically go buy the team for Red McCombs so the team did not get bought by somebody who was taking it out of San Antonio. The guy who leads that, is a guy named General McDermott. He ran the USAA branch in San Antonio. He was a major part of USAA, and they were a major investor that kept Greg Popovich in San Antonio. And kept, sorry, kept the San Antonio Spurs in San Antonio. So General McDermott, though, was an Air Force guy, and he knew Greg Popovich from his time at the Air Force. 
So when he's when they're hiring a new general manager and Greg Popovich applies, one of the reasons he gets the interview and gets in is because Gerald McDermott says, man, I may not know a lot about basketball, but I know people and I know leaders. And that man is a leader. And so he gets in, he gets the interview, the people like him, he gets the job, he becomes a general manager of the Spurs. Spurs start to build up. They have that 95 season where everybody's expecting everything. To, uh, Dave, uh, David Robinson wins the MVP. The Rockets are just better. Akeem Olajuwon goes in there, embarrasses him. Dennis Rodman tanks the season. There's a long storied feud with Dennis Rod- with Popovich and Dennis Rodman. But it goes that Popovich appoints himself as head coach. They finish a poor season. They get the number one draft pick. And they draft Tim Duncan. And this is a little story from Steve Kerr talking about what Pop thinks about Tim Duncan to this day. I have told you this story, but, um, you know, when I have dinner with Greg Popovich, um, literally every dinner when we sit down and the wine is, is poured, he says, here's to Tim Duncan. And, um, and his point is, without Tim, none of that happens. That's how Pop, still to this day, apparently cheers every time he uh, sits down to dinner. Is Here's to Tim Duncan. So the man knows. The man knows. But Tim Duncan will tell you that he credits Pop a lot with bringing him into the NBA and getting him ready to go. That Tim Duncan talks about right when the draft was happening and everything, and Popovich knows they have their one pick. So he goes to the Virgin Islands, goes, meets Tim's parents, he goes, and, and Tim's dad was in poor health at the time. He goes, sits, and talks to him on the beach, goes to where Tim is comfortable to start a relationship, to build a relationship. Because he understands this man is about to walk into something very foreign, and he's going to have his walls up, and he's not going to be comfortable. So let me go to where he is. Let me take the pressure off. Let's not make this too formal that I'm a head coach, general manager in the NBA. Hey, man, I'm, we're just coming to hang out and talk to you. Tim Duncan said year later, years later, he didn't realize this wasn't what everybody did. He thought, oh, I guess all coaches in the NBA do this. No, that's Pop. Pop who wants to make a personal connection because he knows I can't coach you if you don't trust me. If you don't trust me, if you don't respect me, I can't coach you the way I need to coach you. And that's kind of how he goes through life. That's kind of how Pop does it. Pop understands that you have to, you have, to have respect and you have to have trust. And you have to have humility. And you can't ever get too big for it. And one of the things Pop is known for for so many years is that he loves to go out and wine and dine people. Massive uh, fan of wine, massive fan of food. And there's a story of how he would – there's multiple stories of how when the NBA would send over uh, NBA, NBA – the people – coaches from other uh, countries – and basically they would tell the NBA teams, hey, you got to go take these guys out, show them the town, get a photo op. And basically they would send out the film guy or send out some assistant and go, hey, man, go take him down, show him the restaurant, do whatever. We're not going to do it. But Pop makes a big deal about it, takes him out, shows him, introduces him to everybody, does everything. And those guys, and because he loves it, because he wants to do it. And then he talks to him and he picks their brain about basketball. He doesn't make it about he's a great coach. He makes it. I want to learn because I want to learn from you because there may be something that we don't know. One of these dinners he has is with representatives from the Argentinian team. And when nobody else is really scouting this young kid named Manu Ginobili, they're telling Popovich, hey, you need to start scouting this kid. Go over and start watching him. Start sending over scouts because, hey, we'll just tell you, this kid's going to be special. So that's how the Spurs get the, the first line on Manu Ginobili. That's how they're scouting him and feel good taking him at number 58 overall, letting him sit overseas for a little bit. But that's how you do it because Pop had the foresight to treat people with respect, to show them the humility of being a coach, and earn their trust. That's what he built. Shaq tells a story that when Shaq was playing at Cole High School, he couldn't afford the type of shoes that were just too big, so you had to get them special made. You couldn't find them. And so his dad, in an attempt to try and find shoes, went to the Spurs to ask if they had any shoes. And Greg Popovich says, he hits it off with Shaq's dad, gives him some shoes. Says, here, you got these size 18, size 19 shoes. We have some for you. Go take these. Wish you the best of luck. Mike Brown, assistant coach, now the coach of the Sacramento Kings, tells a story about how 
probably when he was separating from his wife, he was just starting out with the Spurs, and he's supposed to be scouting. And the team plane is on one side of the airport, on, and he's trying to get his kids onto a plane to go back to their mother on another side of the airport. And it's kind of taking some time, and the kids are not feeling, and the kids don't want to go, and they're crying. And he's calling Pop and saying, "Hey, man, I look, I'm, I'll be, I'll be there, I'll be there. I promise, I'll be there. I'm just dealing with this and dealing with the kids." And Pop goes, "No, no, no spend time with the kids. We'll be fine." And he says, "No, no, no, I'll be there." And he goes, "Don't worry about it." And he goes, "No, no, I look, it's my scout. I'll be, I have responsibility. I will get the kids taken care of." And Pop says, "If you show up on this plane, you're fired. You take care of your family first, because he understands about respect." He understands about trust, and he knows that Mike Brown can be a piece of this team for years to come. Now, Mike Brown may be a guy who will continue to call plays when they play against him in the NBA Finals that the Spurs know and help the Spurs sweep the Cavs and win the Spurs another NBA title. That too, but Mike Brown shows you the humility of Pop to say, look, we'll, we'll, we'll carry the load. Pop can also be sarcastic, trying to break the ice with guys and when you have a reputation, he does. Sometimes it can uh, result in people not understanding that he was joking. Here's a story from Jock Landell about when he first came to the Spurs. I will say that like my first my first week in the facility, he came to me and I kind of sit back on it now. I'm like, I was probably sarcastic, but he, he came to me at the first practice and he was like, right, I want you to do like a five-minute presentation on the Joe Biden infrastructure bill that's about to be passed for like $3 trillion. And I was like, is this, is this guy serious? Like, I don't even know if he's serious. So I went home and like in my notebook, like writing down this full speech about it. And I was like, all right, I'm ready to go. And then like a week passed. I didn't say anything. A week passed. And I was like, Pop, like I got this speech written down. Like I put some serious time into this. You want me to make this speech? But what's going on? And he was like, oh, I was being sarcastic. But now that, you're, now that I know that, you are for sure telling us about this. So I had to get up in front of the whole group and like read it out of this notepad. And I was just like, God. Like, I definitely could have dodged that. But like... yeah. <laughs> There's Pop asking Jock Landell to do a report on a, on a infrastructure bill. Jock Landell does it, and when he finds out that he actually did it, he makes him give the presentation. Just joking around with guys, just being friends. But this is Popovich and how he gets to coach and how he can get respect, how he can build relationships. That Jock Landell, after that point, they can have a different relationship. And he can coach him in a different way because Pop understands the keys to being a great leader. It's what makes him what he's able to do. 2010 playoffs, the Spurs lose 103-81 to 81 in Game 5 to the Mavs in the first round. Team is freaking out. They don't know. They, you just get molly whopped in a game. What are you going to do? Pop immediately calls a restaurant, gets all the tables set, gets the rooms for them, has dinner with everybody. Brings them all in. Talk about anything but basketball. Tomorrow we'll talk basketball. We're not watching game film. We're not doing that. We're going to talk about people for a little bit and get away from it. Have your family here. Let's go be people for a night, and let's just wipe this off, and let's wake up tomorrow and go attack it. After game six of the 2013 finals, they had a dinner planned. They thought they were winning the championship. They knocked on wood, and it did, they did it before they said it. I told you you can't do that. You have to do it after you say it. They did that. 2013, Ray Allen sinks a dagger. They have dinner planned. Team dinner celebration. After the game, everyone's like, well, I guess dinner's off. Pop's like, no, no, no. We need to go, and we need to go back, and we need to clear our mind. So they all go and have dinner, and Pop stands at the door and introduces and talks and welcomes everybody in there. Tells them what they did good. Builds up confidence. Has the families there. Builds up. Builds this team up, and they didn't win that series. They lose the series. And if you talk to the players, they'll say it's a big reason why that team was ready to attack next year. It's a reason they had the confidence to go in and win another NBA Finals in 2014. Then you hear Doris Burke talk about after that game in 2013 when they lose the finals and she's walking out of the arena and Pop's walking out of the arena. Doris Burke says, I realize I'm on a path that we're going to cross and I don't want to talk to him because he's clearly going to be pissed off. She walks out, Pop walks out, she puts her head down, trying not to make anything. Pop grabs her by the shoulder and says, hey, how you doing, Doris? What are you doing now that the offseason's up? She's like, oh, I may go to Napa Valley. He goes, oh, you know what? Call my assistant. I'll give you all the places to go to. We'll hook you up. And he does. He does. Because that's who Popovich is. And that's what makes him special. That's what puts him in a different camp. Because so much of what people can see is Popovich being political, Popovich being intense, but there is this other side to Greg Popovich that earns a trust. 
And one of the funnest parts about Pop is that the reports are over and over again. If you can't laugh, if you can't laugh at yourself, you're probably not going to work on the Spurs, which is a weird thing to think for a basketball team. But this is apparently one of the tenets to the Spurs way that has worked for so long, which may be a reason why Kawhi Leonard did not work on the Spurs, which may be a reason why as good as Steven Jackson was, he could not continue to work on the Spurs. That some of these guys didn't have the ability to have the humility that you need to have into these organizations to make it work the Spurs way. You can still be a great player, but it may not work in this system. And if you can find a guy who wants to learn, who has that humility, you can make him grow. There's a great story, great story from Richard Jefferson. And I had to censor this a lot because Richard Jefferson was clearly not on TV when he said this. This is a story from Richard Jefferson about Pop in a timeout. So you say all the nice things about Pop. You say all the great things about Pop. This is Pop in the intensity of a game. And the other part, the other factor of Pop that makes him a great coach. Uh, I was playing for the Spurs. And so, you know, he's got one of the quickest timeouts. And guys are BSing. Matt Bonner goes to check into the game, right? Now, while he's at the scorer's table, right? He's at the scorer's table. The team is messing up. So Coach Pop calls a timeout. Everyone comes down to the bench. And so the Matt sits on the bench with the other four guys and one person that he was checking out for. So Pop is on one of those moments. He's like, Tony, what the f- are you doing you better get back on fire and he's just going down the line lighting everybody up so he tony what the manu if you do one more of those left-handed threes i swear to god it's like pop i'm left-handed i don't give a manu tim if we have to fight he's just going down the line now he gets to matt bonner right and he gets the matt bonner now matt hasn't played matt was at the scores table he's going down the line he gets the matt bonner he's like and matt you're just a and just lights into him and matt's like me? What I, I hadn't even been in the game. What, what do you mean me for? It was one of the funniest moments I had ever had. And I think it was in the first half because afterwards in this, uh, at halftime, Coach Pop comes back into the locker room. And he's like, yeah, blank, you still Matt. Like, and everyone starts laughing. But that, that clip just reminded me of that where Pop, it didn't matter. Anyone could get it. If you were sitting there in that bench, he was going to find a reason. He's like, I wouldn't even in the game. So love that story. Gave me a flashback. There you go. I appreciate Richard Jefferson saying blank at the end after saying the F word 12 times in that clip. But that's a pop story. That's what it is. We've heard from guys that they would hate that Tim Duncan will be the guy at the end of the bench, and he would start by yelling at Tim Duncan. And then he would come down and yell at you, and you go, well, he would just yell at Tim. Then I have to take it. I have to just be the one to yell at Because Tim Duncan's not getting mad at it. Then I got to deal with it. And it's funny because he finally gets his opportunity to coach in the Olympics to be the head coach, and it was kind of after when he should have been it, but it just the timing didn't work out. He finally gets his time. They win the gold medal, and at the end of it, he just gives his speech, and it is about two minutes, so I don't want to play it because it goes a little bit long. And the, the key about it is another cuss word. But Popovich gives the entire speech talking about how people how the people didn't believe in them, how people weren't sold on this, this team, and then when they underperformed early on, then people wrote them off, and people said this was going to be the worst Olympic team and everything else. And he gives his whole speech, and you see the team kind of standing around. And he finishes the speech by saying, well, to all those people, I just want to ask you, how the bleep do you like us now? And the whole locker room erupts. And how you can get a group of guys that are all stars in the league to kind of sit back and go, look, man, we're all stars, but we respect you. And we is how you treat them with respect, why you treat them with humility, that it does mean the world to you. But at the end of the day, hey, man, we're all still competitors. And Pop is one of the fiercest competitors in the league. And that's why you feel comfortable with him working with Victor Wimanyama, who seems to be a hell of a competitor in himself. I want to leave you with one last story about Popovich. And this is a great story from Boris Diaw. They were doing at Tony Parker's uh, Jersey retirement. Tony Parker also going to the Hall of Fame. We'll give him his own segment. We'll give him some love at another time. I just wanted to talk about Pop because he is the GOAT. And, and really, for someone like me, has meant a lot to my life personally as a Spurs fan being the one of the masterminds to build this team so Boris Diaw tells a story about a Christmas dinner when you know it's during the regular season uh, a lot of the family for Boris Diaw for Tony Parker are back in France so they can't really go home so they they're kind of pop invites all invites them over for dinner invites them to come over and have Christmas dinner with him and at a point in dinner 
uh, they notice that Pop and Tony are gone, and this is where Boris Diaw takes over. Pop disappear, Tony disappear. I'm like, where are they at? So I go look around the house. I like snooping around. Um, and then I see Pop doing film with Tony about the game the night before. I'm like, we're on Christmas. People eating dinner. And Pop, just like you just uh, apologized, was yelling at Tony. <laughs> but then I go, oh, look that, you look, you missed this shot and turn over the ball. How can you do that? And I'm like, wow. So I was like, in the same night, you could have the family setting, all the loving and care, and at the same time caring about making Tony a better player on Christmas night. That really kind of sums it up for Pop, is he is the guy to go, hey, I want your whole family to come over for dinner. And I'm going to take you aside and yell at you about film. That's why Pop's one of the greats. Hall of Fame ceremony airs this Saturday at 7 on NBA TV. Gene Best, Gary Blair, Pau Gasol, former Spur, Becky Hammond, of course. Great for Silver Stars. David Hickson, Gene Keedy, Dirk Nowitzki, Jim Valvano, Dwayne Wade, the whole 1976 U.S. Women's Olympic team that set the pace. And, of course, Tony Parker and Greg Popovich going in. That's where it's going to be, 7 p.m. On, uh, on NBA TV on Saturday night. Greg Popovich, the GOAT responsible for one of the reasons why I am here today is because of my love of the Spurs and how fun he's made it, but teaching people how to be great leaders. And if you want to be a coach or a leader, you may not agree with everything he does, but if you look at not even being coach, but being a person in life, whatever you do, if you can learn to treat people with respect and kindness, the way pop does, and then Expect the best out of everyone. You will be able to have real friendships that mean something special. And you'll be able to make the world a little better place in whatever you do.